Hey, Hickok 45. If you happen to be in the process of trying to decide between a Remington 870 and a Mossberg 590, you came to the right place. You know, I had to make that same decision. So I feel your pain. And you can tell the decision I made was own them both, right? Well, we're going to shoot both of these and talk about the differences. And uh, we've got them both loaded with one of my favorites, heavy lead slugs. So let's go ahead and empty them and see how they do. Let's do the 590 first. This happens to be the Mossberg 590A1. It is fully loaded, at least in the magazine, with one ounce Foster slugs. Safety's on. Let's put one in the tube and take off the safety and shoot a couple of things, like a jug. <laughs> wow, I got a little bit of a shower there. See if I can hit a two liter with it. How about that orange one? There's no sight on this much. <laughs> All right, remember we're shooting slugs. For those who don't know, that is one solid projectile. Let's try the propane tank over there. <laughs> oh, that rocked it, didn't it? <laughs> See if we can hit a ram. <laughs> I think it hit it. <laughs> Let's move on up to Mr. Gong. Man. Try him again. <laughs> oh, there's still another one in there. Oh boy, nothing like throwing big one ounce slugs out there, I tell you. Okay, wow, that's a Mossberg 590A1. Let's try the Remington. Oh, got a little water on it from some of that action, didn't it? All right, safety's on. Let's put a round in the chamber. Safety off. Oh, another water jug. <laughs> and a two liter. All right, let's try the propane tank. Well, <laughs> and <laughs> let's try a ram. <laughs> well, you know where that takes us, up to the gong. And that's an empty gun. Shotgun. All right, so Remington 870. Woo! Well, no misses, at least on the targets I shot at, right? Okay. So now, wow, look at the <laughs> splashback. So we have the, again, the uh, Model 590A1 Mossberg, and then we have the uh, Wilson Combat uh, Scattergun Tech, you know, modified uh, Remington 870. You know, it's got the, the peep sight on it. And everything and you know the scattergun tech from Wilson combat so I think it's a border patrol model specifically so now these are these are kind of I guess you could say Cadillac versions of, of these two guns in a way you know because you got better sights and and all that and uh, you know you got the a1 model of the 590 but still by and large a Mossberg is a Mossberg Remington 870 is a Remington 870 in terms of the differences and that's mainly what I want to focus on both of these firearms are available in all sorts of configurations you know that with different stocks uh, finishes uh, different magazine capacities and you know just right on down the line you know and of course one thing you do get before I forget it with the uh, the 590 is the capability and of course we're clear right we don't want to be messing around the uh, the muzzle end, the business end of this thing, without you know really checking it carefully. Once we drop this on myself, cut myself. Shouldn't be messing with dangerous things. Should I? There we go. Okay. Before I forget it, I just wanted to point that out that you do have a bayonet lug on the 590s, and I don't know why you'd ever want to buy a shotgun that doesn't have a bayonet lug because you know if you if you can't dress it out like that, you know it's just pretty much a worthless shotgun. Uh, there's people hunting you know, birds and everything else with wingmasters and all kinds of nice shotguns, but they do not have a bayonet lug, so, you know, they don't even realize what they're missing, do they? Pretty funny, huh? Actually, it does have that, though. Just wanted to point that out. We may put it back on and throw it at something. Who knows? 
So uh, you do have you know, the military, of course, uh, has adopted this shotgun. They also use the 870. They use both of these guns. So, like I say, the 870 and the Mossberg, lots of configurations. The bolt, the basic function of the 500, the, the 590, you know, is, is the same. And same uh, with the Remington, no matter which version of it you have. You have, the, you know, there are certain characteristics that are the same. You know, you got the open on the uh, 590, the uh, end of the magazine opens where you can take this off and, you know, take it apart. Whereas with the 870, it's not, you know, it's open on the back and just, just some different characteristics like that I wanted to point out. And of course, if this isn't too hot, I wanted to maybe, if it hasn't gotten too tight on me, possibly take that off and show you one of the differences. Of course, I was tightening it instead of taking it off. Duh. One of the things about the Mossberg, uh, I don't know if it's not necessarily a myth, but if you're trying to decide between these two shotguns, don't let the alloy, the aluminum alloy receiver, uh, eliminate this for you necessarily. Okay, and it can. You know, some people just hate aluminum alloy. They hate uh, you know polymer, and that's okay. This does have an alloy receiver. But one thing you might not be aware of, and you might, is that, let's see, I think I have to, get the, yeah, pull the barrel out. I wanted to show you, the bolt locks up into this flange on the barrel and that opening. See that, that extension there? So that's, that's how it locks up. So you actually have the bolt locking up to, to this. You've got steel to steel lock up. So it's not like you have aluminum locking up to the, the barrel or, you know, the bolt. So just be aware of that. Uh, so it's steel to steel lockup. Now, as I understand all the reading I've done on these guns here and there, and I don't think it's hearsay, that this was really one of the few uh, pump shotguns, if not the only one, that actually passed the really rigid uh, test for the military. Uh, they really put these things through it. and. That's the rumor, that's the word I get, you know, and you probably read the same thing. And I think there's uh, probably some truth to it. The, the thing is just, uh, it works, you know, the, the Mossberg does. So don't let the alloy, and that's a, one of the big differences, you know, the Remington 870 is, uh, you know, a steel receiver, and uh, this one is a aluminum alloy. But it, it still works, it's not a problem. Thing. I must have got that on started quick. I had this off several times. I don't know why I am being a clutch right now. Let me, uh, there we go. Comes off. You can take, uh, of course, the barrel off, take the gun down. I'm not going to break them down right now. We might do that in a, another, uh, another time. Okay. Really smooth action on the 870 or on the 590A1, no doubt about it. They both work. All right, so alloy receiver versus steel receiver. That's a big difference between these two, these two firearms. All right, uh, they both have a nice, nice action. I don't know, people will talk about one being really different from the other. I, I think the actions are, are smooth and work well on both of them. One of the big differences is right here. Your, uh, your shell lifter stays down on the 870. And if you've shot one of these a lot, you probably have been pinched by the you know the the shell lifter you know, as you're putting the rounds in you know you got to push that up and uh and it's sometimes you get into a weird <laughs> uh, klutzy situation and then you get the the shell pops back out uh you know and gets in, uh, up above it and you get into a pinch situation you pinch the skin off your hand and everything else but uh, I, I've noticed there are modifications that you can buy. Some of the people I think that use these in competition have like an extension I've seen and everything, but that's just the way the 870 works. Uh, you got to push that up to get it to get the next one in. Uh, I like the the 590 or the 500 because you don't have that. You know, you just pop them in there. You don't have that uh, shell lifter. It stays up unless you come all the way back. Then it's down. You know, when you're all the way back, but it's 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 up almost all the time, uh, giving you access, you know, to the magazine. So, so I know whenever I'm shooting these, you know, I'm trimming trees, whatever I'm doing, it's just so simple to have a pocket full of these. You don't even have to look. Just you know, just pop them in there. It's just a smooth operation. So I like that. And again, these are both mine. I like them both. So there are advantages, there are disadvantages, maybe to either one. And uh, so again, I was kidding around at the beginning, but I, I chose I chose them both. So I'm not going to bash either one. I like them both. 
Uh, the alloy doesn't bother me, like I said. Now, the controls, actually, that's one of the negatives for the uh, Remington, as far as I'm concerned, okay, if I'm looking for negatives. Now, the other thing is, you've got a difference in the safety position. You know, you've got your standard safety there on the trigger guard. This has an oversized one because it's a Wilson Combat, but it's right there. And it's pretty handy. And of course, your slide release is up there. It breaks the slide loose, all right? So that's your classic configuration. These, these things came out in, what, 1951. Been around a long time. And one of the things I like a little bit better about the Mossberg is the fact that you've got this slide break right there. It just seems handier. You don't have to reach out there for it. In fact, you can have your finger on the trigger or in the trigger guard, you know, and you catch that with your, you know, your little middle finger there. It's just really handy. Also, the safety, you know, right there, your thumb. In fact, you can have your finger here ready to pull the trigger, have this finger, you know, on the slide release, and the thumb on the safety. I mean, you can have everything under control right there that you need without moving your trigger finger. So that's pretty handy. I like that a little bit better. I really do. And of course, you, that's naturally ambidextrous, right? So whether you're righty or a lefty, you know, it's right there on top, right in the middle. So a lot of people like, like that particular uh, aspect of it a little bit better. Now again, uh, you, you notice you have better sights on this one because you just do. They're expensive and they're really nice. You know, you got a tritium and all that kind of thing. That's just because of this specific model. Uh, you know, you could you could put that on here. Some of the uh, the 500s or the 590s, you can you can put a rail, you can put a uh, uh, ghost ring sight on it. Uh, you can put the same, just about the same kind of outfit if you want to. Those are accessories that anybody can put on or have put on that don't necessarily get to the basic function of the of the shotgun. Let's take a couple of shots now. One of the things is how do they operate? Now you notice they both seem to shoot fine with slugs and seem to be, <laughs> dare I say, accurate. Let's go ahead and load it up while I'm gabbing. But uh, safety on. Yeah, as, as uh, we've demonstrated before a few times, uh, plain old one ounce Foster slugs are more accurate than a lot of people realize. And uh, you yeah, know, just messing around there. And I haven't shot either one of these uh, shotguns for a while. And I'll tell you, before the video, I thought, well, okay, let me, I'm going to shoot some slugs in this video. Let me take some shots and make sure I know where to hold. I took one with each one and hit the first thing I was shooting at. Uh, you know, these pretty much right on. And so <laughs> I just took one shot with each one and decided, well, that's all I need to beat myself up with. And uh, they, they just shoot. They just shoot well. I don't think you're going to be picking off a prairie dog at 300 yards with a slug. But for a smooth bore, these are smooth bores, of course and a cylinder bore I think on both of them so you know it's just a, it's remarkable how well just plain old slugs do shoot uh, so we shot some of that let's just shoot some uh, field loads these are seven and a half just Federals just to just to shoot the other thing I want to compare a little bit is the, the the slide I don't do this side by side very much so let's take a look at that the slide action so what I'm going to do is go ahead I think I'll top top it off here. Safety on. I'm just going to, well, I'm just going to shoot and uh, work the slide. Pretend I need to shoot uh, kind of in a hurry. I don't know. We've got some pots and different things out here that need to be shot. So let's shoot some of it. Works fine. Works fine. He'll shoot faster than that. Let's try the other one. I'll top it off too. Remember to release the uh, slides up here. Safety's on. That wasn't that's on now. Put another one in so you got to push up the uh, shell lifter there. All right. There's a pot or two left there. Uh oh. <laughs> Short shucked it a little bit that one time, didn't I? There we go. You notice what I was doing? I was looking for the uh, slide release right there. That's where it is on the Mossberg. And uh, that's another point that uh, needs to be made. Uh, a little bit like, uh, I guess, you know, polymer modern pistol Glock or something versus 1911. You might want to stick with one or the other for the most part. And I, I tend to do that. I, I have one of these kind of as my bedroom firearm. 
and I have a hard time deciding which one. I probably ought to put one in the box and put it away for a while and then just shoot one of them because you're a better shotgunner, you're a better prepared, uh, you know, defensively and every other way if you know exactly how it's going to operate. You know, it's something I'm, I'm guilty of myself. You just saw that because I have them both. But it would be advisable for all of us to, uh, to decide on a, a pattern and probably stick with it. Because you know? the controls are a little different. They really are. So, now, uh, like I say, I prefer the controls a little more on the, the Mossberg. Uh, it's harder to get a, a ghost ring like I like on the Mossberg because the safety is right here. I like the safety being right there, but I love this scattergun tech uh, ghost ring being right there where the safety is. So, yeah, what I would really like is to have the safety there and that bow. So it's hard to achieve that. Uh, it really is. But both are really nice guns. Now, a couple of things I didn't talk about uh, I wanted to show you is the ejector. Now, on the Mossberg, if your ejector breaks, and that's right in there, it's what throws the shell out. You can just take that one screw out there and you can replace it. Okay, put the screw back in. With the Remington, a little more involved. It's uh, it's riveted, pinned, and it's in most cases a gunsmithing job. Okay, unless you're really handy and got all the tools. So, so there's one thing that uh, you might be interested in. Also in the bolt, you'll see. Uh, notice on the uh, if you can see the the end of the bolt, you've got two extractors. You got one on both sides on the Mossberg. So, you know, two extractors. Whereas on the uh, Remington, you have one extractor. Okay, I mean they tend tend to work, uh, but you know, seems like the Mossberg's a little beefier in that area. Okay, and then you might also see here now that it's all put back together. You see the probably get my pointer here. You see that part I was showing you when I had the barrel out there. It is right there. The barrel actually extends down to right there. And you see that that slot, that big cutout. That's where the bolt. As I bring the bolt forward, bolt pulls up in the top and it locks into that slot. So. So it is steel matching steel, okay? Even though this part right here is polymer, or not polymer, but alloy, aluminum alloy, okay? And uh, those are some of the big differences right there. Uh, it's a little easier to uh, maybe put an extension, uh, extended magazine uh, on a, because you know, I think everybody almost <laughs> seems like does that on the 870s. You can just uh, add it right there like this one has been done. Although in some models, they've got these little divots down here to keep you from uh, doing that successfully. You've got to take a tool and go in there and, and uh, uh, widen them out or dremel them out. I had one one time where that had not been done well and the shells would kind of drag or hang up on these little indentions you know, in the magazine tube. I don't think uh, Mossberg does that at all, so just be aware of that. But uh, this was added by Scattergun Tech and Wilson Combat and everything, so it's, it's, it's done right. you got a polymer trigger guard on this that's hardly even worth talking about i think even though this one has a metal trigger guard it's only because of this particular model it has a metal safety and a metal trigger guard that's because of the model it's got the thicker walled barrel it's just the one i kind of wanted i have no problem at all with polymer as you know uh, polymer in a lot of ways is stronger than uh, metal alloy and that sort of thing so that's uh, that's kind of a wash i think if you're worried about polymer and you're you're worried too much about alloy you know I don't know, just get you an old 870 and, and forget it, I guess. But uh, if you're going to join the 21st century, uh, you need to probably, not to preach at you, but, but to kind of develop an attitude, different attitude about polymer and, uh, you know, and even alloy in some ways. Because the stuff doesn't break. You know, it takes a lot to break it, a lot. And in, in a lot of cases, the polymer outlasts and, and does better than the, the metal, you know, so... It's just amazing. I know in cars it's the same way. So the uh, now again, this is I'm, I'm not. Uh, I, I realize the difference between this gun and maybe your Mossberg 500 or even your 590. There's just a di few different features. Same with the 870. You know, this one obviously has a sight. Yours probably does not have. You know, it didn't go through the the Wilson Combat, uh, you know, scattergun tech process or anything. Still, it's a Remington 870. You got the Remington 870 bolt. You got the the shell lifter. You got the safety and all uh, the 
the slide release. You got all the functions that are basically the same, and uh, that's just how they work. Okay. If you're thinking about buying one of these two two shotguns, that's kind of why I want to go over this mainly is to, uh, I guess, maybe to help assure you that you're not going to really make a big mistake with either one, you know. I still am not sure which I like better, you know. I'm really, I kind of favor the Mossberg in some ways, but I sure love that sight right there. But now when I actually shoot the things, and we've, we've shown that in some videos, you know, I, I think I actually hit as well with this, with that little feeble nothing of a sight with slugs, as I do this thing here. Uh, you know, the verdict is still out. Verdict is still out for me, basically. Just a little bit leaning towards this one right here. But because of what I've got on this one, uh, this one tends to be, you know, handier. Okay, tritium front sight, that ghost ring, beautiful thing. Uh, so I don't know. Let's shoot one of them a little bit more. You know what? My shoulder is not bruised enough, so. I'm going to load up this Mossberg because it holds, I think, one extra round and take a few more <laughs> shots. You know, I just, when I get a chance to shoot heavy lead, I do it. Oh, we have a, we have a melon here too. And you know what? Before I do that, by the way, I don't know if you knew this, I'm not going to charge you any extra for this. If you, if you didn't want to uh, empty your gun that way, you can uh, bring this back on, on either one of these. And let's see, yeah, you reach in there and it's on the left side, a little around there, push it and the shell will come, come out, okay? Remington's the same way, let me show you that. In fact, well, let's see, let's put it in here. And let's say I want to empty it, you just reach in there, it's over on this side and it jacks it back. I think it has to be, there we go. It releases it and then you can get it out. And you can tell I haven't done it in a while. And there you go, you got that Remington uh, configuration with the cases. Well, I know I've done that more successfully. Maybe the bolt has to be back. That's it. The bolt has to be all the way back. That's it. That's it. Duh. Okay. So if you got it all the way back, uh, the slide all the way back. All you have to do is reach in there and you can see press on that There you go. <laughs> it's that simple. <laughs> I just made it more difficult. All right. All right So let's shoot the uh, let's load this baby up, but they'll both do that You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna pop it off safety on Because I'll before you know the reason I took that out was so I could put this on there though You know, I mean they just shoot better when you got the bayonet on <laughs> I mean, why have a bayonet if you're not going to wear it, you know? I mean, is that a rig or what? Is that a beautiful thing? <laughs> is that a beautiful thing? I just wanted to put that on when the gun was empty, you know, just to, again, be a little bit safer. All right. Now, ooh, that makes it a little heavier on the end. Now, notice, oh, this thing is so simple to load. They just slide in there effortlessly. Not a problem. When you're in the middle of combat, you want to be topping it off, you know, as you move along. Okay. All right. Well, let's take a few more. Now, it may not be as accurate with the uh, uh, bayonet on it. We'll see. Okay, safety off. What is shootable here? I'm going to go back over there for a couple anyway. Ah, a ram. Let's try that turkey. Just over, didn't it? I think I hit it. Oh, what would you give me if I hit that chicken? I think it'd be worth a special prize. I can't even see the sight. Ah, uh, you guys owe me. You owe me. Let me put one on the gong again. <laughs> put another one up there. <laughs> and one on the propane tank. Alright, we have one round left, and guess what I'm saving it for? 
you guessed, you guessed. We're gonna attack right here, okay? Now if I get this all over me, uh, it's your all's fault. So here we go. Oh, this is a slug, isn't it? Oh, well, that's all right. We will do it safely. Okay, safety's off. Ah! <laughs> oh, look at that. What a mess. What a mess. We're empty. <laughs> oh, boy. Can't believe the things I do. For you folks, look, look at the juice I made there. <laughs> uh, we'll put that in a glass and uh, mix it up with some ice and water here after a while. <laughs> I hope we didn't get too much on the camera. But anyway, just a look at the differences. I know it's uh, it's one of the, now there are a lot of other shotguns out there, of course, a lot of good shotguns, but for a lot of people, it comes down to uh, some variation of the 870 or the Mossberg 500, 590. This is the 590A1. And you can get all kinds of different accessories and, and different uh, features, you know, in each one of them, of course. But uh, some of the things I pointed out uh, are, are some of the fundamental differences between the two. And, you know, you may like some of those things. You might prefer the slide release up here in front of the trigger guard over where this one is, you know, for example. And uh, in this feature right here, maybe you hadn't even thought of it. You hadn't even looked at them uh, carefully yet. Maybe you have an 870 around. Your, your parents have one. You're thinking about a shotgun. You're just not sure. You weren't even aware, really. Maybe you hadn't looked at a Mossberg yet. And uh, you may be a lefty, you know. And, uh, oh, wow, I didn't know that. That was right there. That's cool. And that, that you know, it's a big point in that favor uh, for the Mossberg. So, I don't know. Just a little food for thought. Speaking of food. <laughs> anyway, uh, man, you know, it's hard to shut me up when I got shotguns, isn't it? And, and get me to quit shooting because I love them. Life is good. <laughs>